What's up YouTube? This is the Wisco Butter Channel. My name is Chad and today I'm going to start working on uh, removing the lifelines from Thirsty Whale to replace them with new ones I've got. Uh, currently on the boat is the uh, quarter inch uh, coated lifelines and if you look at them closely the, the coating is cracked and in some cases there's even some uh, rust showing through so uh, what I need to do is go along each one of these lines. I'm just going to cut cut the line and then we'll remove the toggle from each one of the stanchions. Uh, so I'm just going to go around, cut all the lines, come back, but I'll show you how to do one here to begin with. So simple enough to uh, maybe Just like everything else on a boat, nothing is freaking easy. <sighs> I just paid $25 for this nice set of channel lock <sighs> cable cutters and it's not doing the job. <sighs> All right, well, that didn't work, obviously. So um, let's cut to a couple weeks later where I go back up to the boat and get the lifelines cut off the boat in a successful, correct way. Enjoy. So in order to get these off, these are stainless steel. Um, so I'm gonna have to use a cutoff wheel. And what I'm gonna do is just uh, make a cut right here at the, where the, where the old wire, where the wire goes into the toggle. So there's enough tension on this that it's not gonna um, sag when I go through and it shouldn't just whip away or anything once I, once I get through the cut. But after I make the cut, I'll bring the toggles home. Uh, I'll cut the other ends off as well. And then there's a little uh, swage in here that will need to be pounded out so I can put new lines in and new swages. So we'll see how this goes. This set up over here. Eye protection and get on the right side of the Just got to do that six more times and get these things off of here. All right, so there's only two on this side of the boat, the uh, starboard side, the long ones, and then there's four to cut on the port side. So. I'll get those cut and uh, we'll pull the lines out, bring these things home and uh, start working on them to get the new lines installed. You can see here why I'm replacing these. Let me turn the camera around. So if we get a little closer look at the at the lifelines here, you can see the PVC coating is cracked, which poses not only a danger for someone to cut themselves, but also allows water intrusion and they get trapped. And uh, depending on the type of stainless, it can certainly end up starting to rust. So. These are original to the boat and in dire need of replacement. It is considered a safety issue. Uh, when my surveyor 
did the uh, inspection for me before I bought the boat, these were high up on the list. So they're all gonna get replaced with 316 stainless, non-coated wire. And uh, I think it'll look real nice when it's done because these things are just old and nasty. All right, so getting the toggles off is fairly easy. 3 8 acorn nut, uh, screw on the other side. I'll just back these out slowly because obviously I don't want to lose the hardware. Once the acorn nut lock washer is free, get these off by hand. Obviously if I drop something, I can always replace it. It's just standard stainless steel hardware, but I don't want to, I don't have to. So there's the toggle. So what I'll do when I get back to the house is we'll push this out and inside here, there is a, a swage collet, I guess you could call it, huh? Um, so we'll push that out and then when we insert the new wire, um, well, uh, yep, almost dropped one. What's new? I did drop one, didn't go overboard. Uh, but we'll put new swage collars on and uh, we'll do one side at home and then come back to the boat and do the other side here because I obviously have to get the wire back through the stanchions and uh, we'll swage the other toggles uh, back up here on the boat and then tension them with the turnbuckles. So there's a toggle free. If you have to replace these, these are very expensive. Um, I think the cheapest that I found this style uh, might have been Defender, and I think they're about 68 bucks a piece. So if you're replacing 12 of them, as I have on my boat, what is that? $750 or so probably. So valuable things to keep. All right, I've got a bag full of six toggles and lifelines off the boat. No hardware lost. You can hear this stuff crack. It's so brittle. There are some areas, um, I don't know if I have a good example in here. Yeah, here we go. That's, that's a really nasty split that could easily cut someone's leg, so. I'm happy that I'm doing this. I think the new stainless steel non-coated lines are going to look awesome. Uh, but there's nothing else I can do here. That went really well. The cutoff wheel worked great. Um, I will admit to a, <laughs> a, a silly try, I guess is what I'll, we'll call it. Here was the, this is the result of, of trying to cut stranded stainless steel wire with cable cutters. It just doesn't do anything. So. I'll have to strap this into the uh, vise at home to get these wires cut so I can push them through. But if you're doing this, don't use cable cutters like me because that was dumb. Um, I had been told that a hacksaw works good. Um, uh, my friend John that has a Chris Craft 35 Commander here up in Sturgeon Bay, he did his um, a few years ago. He used a hacksaw. Worked fine. Um, we thought about a Dremel, which probably would have done the job as well. but the you know the cutoff wheels on the dremel are so thin that i was afraid i would just break them so went to the uh, grinder cutoff wheel and it worked great so back at home and i've got my bag full of six toggles and i've got the uh, lifelines right there with the other set of six toggles still attached so i'm going to start with these uh, i'll remove the screw hardware and then uh, put the toggles in a vise and see if I can pound out the the wire that's left in there from the cutoff yesterday. See that right there? That's just got to be pushed out. So get the hardware off and we'll get the vise set up and we'll see if we can push these out in order to put new ones on. All right, we'll get the vise set up here. Drop a toggle in this way. I'm not going to squeeze too hard because I don't want to 
mess up the width of the tines, but we'll use a punch and I hope just pop this collar out. Just like that. So these are <clears throat> reusable. You can look down the uh, center there, clear. And we have our collet taken out. And I needed to see these before I ordered new, uh, uh, I guess they're called collets, so I can swage new ones on. Um, need the correct diameter to swage on to the new 3 16th line because this is quarter inch line with coating, which makes it 5 16th. So I'll find the correct size for 3 16th, but the same diameter to go back inside the the toggle. So we'll get the other the other ones pounded out here. There's our old pieces out of those six, and I have six more to do. So I do have all my measurements laid out on uh, some graph paper here. Those are the curtains up there, which will be another video. But these are the lengths of runs that I need. So I'm going to uh, get those cut. Here's all the new line. And uh, there's three pieces, three strands of 30 feet here. So I've got 90 feet of uh, lifeline which uh, I will really only need, I think, according to my chart here, there's 60 and 23 and a half. So 80, 80, we'll call it 85 feet total is what I'm gonna need. So I will uh, get the old lifelines put in the vise, we'll cut those toggles off, get everything, all the old collets out of the way, and then go from there. Okay, got the uh, vise set up. We're gonna cut off the other ends of the lifelines that I wasn't able to do on the boat yesterday. I just need some, uh, we need a, uh, some, a, a steady, sturdy setup so I can do this. So we'll just cut these six off, pound these collets out, and uh, we'll start working on the lengths of wire for the replacement. <laughs> Okay, today I'm gonna to start working on um, putting the swage sleeves on the the new uh, lifelines here. Lifeline wire, cables, lines, whatever you wanna call them. I got my order from McMaster Car. I've got these uh, genuine Nico Press uh, sleeves. These are uh, zinc plated copper with a uh, 3 16 inner diameter for a 1 by 19 cable. Here's what they look like before they get squeezed or pressed. Oops. Uh, they're just under 3 8 uh, long and they're actually pretty easy to use. I've already done one just to practice but I will show you how these get installed. First thing I need to do is remember to put on the toggle first. It goes on like this. And I will uh, take my electrical tape off here. I taped each one of these ends when I got the, the lines just to be sure that they didn't fray. And one by 19 wire stays together pretty well. So we'll slide our sleeve on here. And we might have to do a little bit of twisting. OK, 
Okay. Our sleeve on there. And I'm using the Swagit tool. Um, this is from Swagit Tools. Very easy tool to use. Uh, these are fairly inexpensive, I do believe. I did borrow this one from um, another Chris Craft owner who did his lifelines a couple years ago. It says it's got some markings on it 1 16th, 3 32nd, 1 8th. Um, I'm using the 1 8th setting. I don't actually know what that refers to, but the sleeve fits in here just fine. So we get that the sleeve to sit right in the middle there. And you can just tighten it down with your fingers first. You gotta keep them even, otherwise they start to bind up. Okay, when you have it about where you want it, I'm gonna back it off just a little bit because I wanna make sure that that sleeve is centered. And I want just a little bit of wire exposed at the end there, maybe a 16th of an inch. Okay, when you have the sleeve centered, and then we just take our half inch socket here and start tightening it down. Crimp is done when you can't turn them anymore. Okay, that means our, our ends, our top and bottom piece have met. Now we go the other way. Loosen them back up. Again, keeping them even. Once you get them loose, you can do them by hand. And there we have a crimped sleeve. Okay, we've got our crimp on there sufficiently. Let me slide it into the toggle. This way. Okay, here we go. You can see it fits right down inside the toggle. And that is not going anywhere. So I've got 12 of these to do in total. Um, six of them, six of them I can do here at the house. The other six I will have to do up on the boat because I have to get the other end of each one of these wires through the stanchions. of work. I've got all six of the lifelines cut to the correct length. I use the old lifelines as uh, as guides to cut the new ones by putting one end in the vise as you saw in the time lapse there, stretching it out across the garage to match up the length and then cut um, each one with the uh, additional length that is required with the sleeves in place. So all my toggles are on one side of each of these. And uh, a few days, we'll take these up to the boat, get them run through the stanchions, and then we'll do the uh, rest of the sleeves, toggles, get these things tensioned and wrapped up. Okay, well, back up on the boat, and uh, I'm gonna start with the, the uh, port side rear lifelines. These are the shorter ones and somewhat precarious walking around the, the uh, gunnels here with uh, no lifeline, but there's a boat. 
right next to it. Okay, well, it's not the best view, but kind of in a, a little bit of a limited space here, so get these zip ties cut off. This is the lower lifeline. So the first thing I want to do is get the hardware attached on the end with the turnbuckle. Hopefully without losing any hardware. Okay, I'm just going to hand tighten these for now. And then we'll run our line through the stanchion. down to the other end here. And we've got the other end that we need to swage and put the toggle on. Okay, you got the toggle, swaging tool, swage sleeve, and a swage sleeve. And I left the ratchet over here. All right, very tight quarters here. <laughs> so our toggle goes on first. Don't want to forget that. We'll take our tape off. Our swig sleeve on. And loosen up the tool. Get the swig sleeve set. I'll show you what this looks like when I'm done. But let's make sure we get that sleeve centered. And this really needs to be cinched down tight. But we'll get it started. Slide the toggle up. All right, now we're short here. You can see, but that's okay. We'll loosen up the uh, turnbuckle and uh, lengthen that out a little bit. This was, uh, I mean, it's to be expected. The lines were under tension, so I'll loosen that turnbuckle up and then we'll get this in installed. All right, so for loosening a turnbuckle, I've already got one nut here loosened up from the other day. Bring that down just a little bit. Okay, and then this one, keep the turnbuckle in place, break the jam nut free. We'll bring it all the way down. Okay. And then we just turn the turnbuckle so both ends, you can see there's more threads being exposed here, more threads being exposed here, so we're lengthening it. Okay, let me go check to see how close we are. We are almost there, so just a little bit more. Okay. And then we'll go back down to the other end. And we got our hardware here. All right, so that's one line put on. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna uh, 
can tighten the turnbuckle for now until I get the top one on. Actually, I'll probably do, um, well, there's a gate here, so I could go ahead and tension these, but I may just go around and do the entire boat and then come back and tension up each turnbuckle. But it's a pretty simple thing to do. All right, so really that's all there is to it. So I gotta do this uh, five more times. So I'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll come back and uh, show you the final result. All right, we'll take a quick walk around the boat. The lifelines are installed, they are not, uh, the hardware is not, not tight yet, and they're not tensioned yet, but uh, they look really good. Here's our turnbuckles. I've got the, uh, Lock nuts still fairly loose. I'm gonna actually loosen them up just a little bit more because tensioning is gonna take up some of the threads. So, I mean, they're, they're pretty tight, but we'll get them cinched down a little bit more. Go to the other side here. I'm going to get kicked out of the building here in a few minutes, so I'm not going to have time to uh, tighten up all the hardware and tension these tonight, but it's a good couple of hours up here after I got here this afternoon. Here's the last set. And going back up to the bow. So, so far so good. Tomorrow morning we'll get these tensioned and check this item off the list. All right, it's the next day. It's a Saturday, back on the boat. And I uh, did a little uh, research last night, reading to see what, uh, uh, if there was a standard out there for tensioning uh, lifelines. There actually is not uh, an official guideline for tensioning them. Um, there's the uh, ABYC standards, which is the American Boat and Yacht Council, uh, which I'm a member of, so I have access to their standards library. The only thing it says um, in the section regarding lifelines is that they have to be able to support a 400 pound load, um, which I'm not going to do. Um, but uh, all the other standards that I've, that I've come across, there's one from like the Pacific Institute of of uh, marine technology or something like that that says any lifeline between stanchions should be able to to not deflect more than four inches under a five pound load which is a lot so uh, and then the other standard i found i think was a european standard which showed uh, like 4.1 kilograms with no with uh, of weight with no more deflection than 50 millimeters which if you think of a large watch, that, you know, 50 millimeters is a large watch face. So that's also a lot in my opinion. So some people, I guess, do kind of leave these a little bit more slack to be easier on the hardware. Um, I'm gonna go out and uh, check these and I'll show you what they look like. They're actually pretty tight, right. just by hand tightening the uh, turnbuckle, which I did last night. So let's go out and take a look and see what they look like uh, as far as deflection goes. And then I'm gonna go around the boat and tighten all of the hardware and uh, we'll get these uh, get these lines wrapped up all right so if we come out here and take a look at where we're at tension wise right now they move a little bit but i'm not moving them more than 50 millimeters up or down that one's a little looser. So, first thing I'm gonna do is go around the boat and tighten all of the attachment hardware here. And then we'll come back and adjust the turnbuckle on each one of these just a little bit. See, this one's still, I can tighten that by hand easily. But uh, we'll get these set where I'm comfortable with them being.
Okay, now we're gonna take a little bit more slack out of these lines. Using the, just a um, pick that slides in here. We'll hold on to the line to keep our hardware straight. And basically just move it kind of, there's marks on the threads here where they were tensioned before. So let's put them right back about where they were. That feels good. Maybe just one more turn. Okay. Right there for that one. When you tighten this one, this one loosens up. So this one's got a little ways to go still. That feels good for both of them. Hardware is in the right spot. And then we'll move the jam nuts down. And while we keep the turnbuckle in place, we'll cinch down the block nut, just like that. This one's a different size. Okay. straight hardware and good tension on the lines so I'll go around the boat and do those and we'll take one final look of the lifelines um, I'll probably get off the boat and show what they look like from below because I think it's a little bit better view but all right let's see if we can get a look at the lines from the outside here I don't know how good this is going to show but it's the new lines on the uh, port aft side be able to scoot back just a little bit here. We can see the new lines in place. Port forward. And we'll walk around the other side of the boat. It's a little darker on the other side, but. Starboard side, the long lines. These are the 21 foot runs. No gates on this side. So I think they turned out great. I like the look of the uh, stainless lines without the coating on them a little bit better. Um, I think both look nice, but the non-coated ones uh, just look a little more my style, I guess, is the way to put it. So they're all done. Uh, one more thing crossed off the list. So thanks for watching this episode of the Wisco Boater channel. Hope you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and send me some comments. If you want to be notified when I post new videos like this one, hit that notification bell. And we'll see you next time on the Wisco Butter Channel. Happy boating, everybody.